We are Future Radio. Now, for me, art is one of the most powerful forms of communication. They didn't lie when they said a picture tells a thousand words. And here in Norwich, we certainly are not short of incredible galleries and exhibitions we can visit to transport us on an incredible artistic journey. Last year, between the 22nd of November and the 4th of December, the Crypt Gallery was home to Kerwin Blackburn's Pop Goes the Easel exhibition, showcasing colourful pop art pieces and I'm delighted to say that Kerwin joins me now to tell us all about his amazing journey as an artist and the power art holds to him. Now first of all thanks for joining me today Kerwin it's great to talk to you. Hi Sophie yeah thanks for having me. So when did your journey as an artist begin? Um, this is a good question. Uh, my journey with my current art brand and business which is called By Kerwin started just over four years ago. Uh, I launched at the end of 2019 so I'm about four years into that and about five years into the actual, this art style that I'm doing, the pop art in the Jackson Pollock style. And um, but I've been, oh, sorry, but yeah, I've been doing art for a long time since I was uh, um, at school, very young. Um, so I've done, done it in the school holidays in different styles and sort of grown um, over a number of years, really sort of learning in different styles and my practice and so on. And would you say that now this, um, like, Jackson Pollock-inspired pop art pieces is, a, like, a style you'd probably stick to now in the future, or do you like to experiment a bit of your artwork? Um, no, good question. No, this style is definitely um, sticking around for now. Um, I'm four years into this style and building my own um, brand and my niche around this pop art, um, bright, colourful painting style, and all my marketing is around, you know, geared around my current style and all the different music icon faces, which is my niche. And all my marketing and blogging online is all um, based around this one style. And this is kind of where I've really specialised in. So I think if I was to experiment in different, go in different directions, that would sort of be shooting myself in the foot. Um, so no, this style is definitely sticking around and this is definitely my thing now, yeah. <laughs> yeah, as like I said, it's got those um, that absolute colour. People are drawn to it. And the fact that you have quite lots of um, musical icons and people in your pieces, do you think you try to leave any messages for your artwork? Because like I mentioned, sometimes art can be such a powerful form of communication in a sense. Yeah, um, so I started, the first one I did was The Beatles um, about four and a half years ago, and then just there stuck mainly with the music theme and a few other big kind of pop culture faces like Twiggy and Kate Moss. Um, but it's mainly music theme, which is a topic I understand, and uh, it sort of fits with my um, style, sort of uh, the energy and the bright colours and all the different kind of personalities I can convey. Um, it kind of works well with the music theme. Um, and yeah, the, the aim of my artwork is to be kind of bright and colourful and optimistic, and have a sort of sense of energy and purpose to them. Um, so that was the style from the, the the idea from the start. And then most of my business and most of the paintings have been done during the pandemic period. So sort of 2020 and 2021 was the key period when I really um, built a lot of the, the range and did a lot of the paintings and the sort of the situation at the time with all the sort of bleak news and all the kind of uncertainty and all the sort of negativity that really inspired me to go even more colorful and even brighter and even more optimistic. Um, so that's definitely informed the the sort of aim and the purpose of the paintings, yeah. That is so important, because like you said, during the pandemic, when times were so uncertain and bleak for so many of us, having that pop of positivity and colour must have been great for you, but then also the artwork you were showcasing to everyone else. So how important, like we mentioned about colour in your artwork, would you say that's probably the most key aspect to your artwork, or is it the people behind it? Um. Good question. I think both parts are key. Uh, the initial starting point and inspiration was the Jackson Pollock um, action painted component to them and I actually came across this through the Stone Roses album cover, um, which is the green one with the lemons and it's kind of got that um, Jackson Pollock technique on it. So that was the starting point and then I combined that with the um, pop art Andy Warhol type style and put those two different um, art techniques together and then um, yeah, the, the colours sort of been the big sort of focal point to make them as colourful and bright as possible, using lots of different colour palettes and all different colours across the different painters in the range. Um, so that's probably the key selling point, the key thing that stands out. And then the music, I tr try and pick uh, music icons that resonate with different people. So picking a nice good mixture of faces from different eras, different styles of music, so there's a nice sort of universal appeal to my range. Um, and yeah, sort of matching the different colours and the different colour schemes to the different personalities that are painted. 
capturing the different icons in the sort of colors that you associate them with and so on. Um, and yeah, sort of just, um, yeah, it's working well so far. So I'm looking forward to just uh, painting lots more icons and sort of capturing people's different uh, music icons. That is amazing, because like you said, that you can get your inspiration from Jackson Pollock and Andy Warhol, but then combining that with the icons of the music industry too, to create your own style, which like you said, captures the movement, the energy and the positivity, which obviously you um, recently shown at your exhibition in Norwich with Pop Goes Easel. First of all, brilliant name. And um, <laughs> second of all, what was your favourite thing about the exhibition and actually showcasing your work to an audience and seeing their interaction with it too yeah thanks no i'm still pleased with that name um <laughs> it, it took a while because uh, for the first few years i used the, the exhibition title lights canvas action which i was pleased with but i used that so much i thought i had to come up with a new one luckily pop goes diesel came to me um the exhibition itself was really good it's it's in uh it was in norwich school's crypt gallery next to Norwich cathedral it's actually the second time i've exhibited there i did a big two-week show in early 2022 um, it's a great space. You can um, customize it yourself, and it's got lots of nice architecture in there. So definitely check it out if you're an artist looking for a space in Norwich to exhibit at. Um, and I always love exhibiting my work in person. Um, I'm an e-commerce brand and online shop, first of all. So I do a lot of online work um, and promote my work online across different platforms a lot. But then when I do get to show in person, it's really special to um, allow people to see the actual texture and sort of see the physical pieces themselves. And um, to be able to, I'm always present at my exhibition, so to be able to speak to people and convey my story in person and hear and see how they react to different paintings and hear their stories of their different music icons and sort of the memories it brings back to them is always um, a really special part of my art and how I can connect to people. And uh, exhibiting in Norwich is always really special as well because um, being from Norwich myself, it's I've got a special bond to the place and people do like my story of how I've um, gone to university elsewhere and sort of uh, moved around a little bit. Um, and come back to Norwich, and it's always good to sort of connect on that personal level as well. And I think as well, Norwich is a good place for me to show this kind of art because there's not a lot of pop art type stuff that people can see in person that often. Uh, when I do my shows in London, it's great in terms of the London buzz and everything and the connections, but there's so much going on in London that it's hard to sort of really get people to, to slow down a bit and think and connect with them properly. Whereas I come to Norfolk and it's got that, um, it sort of stands out a bit more and people do um, like take their time and I can sort of build more of a relationship with people directly. Um, so yeah, that, that show in November and December in Norwich was another really good one. Yeah, I can imagine, like you said, that you're able to, first of all, see people's interaction with the pieces themselves and how, because I personally believe that everyone responds differently to art and they could love, I could love one piece and style of art, but someone else could love something completely different. And like you said, seeing them engage with icons of the music industry and the colour and energy your pieces radiate. Like you said, Norfolk is sometimes, and Norwich is tucked away, it's a little quiet. So having bringing this energy and positivity, people are going to find it and give their attention to it and think wow stop and look and think well this has actually got a lot of movement and pace and it's going to catch their attention and so obviously you've got a lot of busyness going along with your art and further exhibitions so what can our listeners look forward to in 2024 um so they can look forward to lots more um work online with me telling my story online through my blog posts and videos and interviews and stuff online so that's one side of uh, my art brand the kind of digital virtual side and then uh, I'll, I'll also be planning um further shows and exhibitions as and when the time and the right venue comes up uh, no plans yet um i'm still sort of just just finished the wrap up from the previous one um so i've got an eye out for the next sort of venue and location and it has to be the right time of year and everything. You need quite a few um, components to come together to do a really successful show. Um, but if they stay in touch on my social media or through my website, buykerwin.com, all the news will be on there um, so they won't miss it. Um, but yeah, the focus for me really is um, the online side, telling my story virtually and, and digitally um, to build my online presence and then kind of grow in that sense. Um, so it's nice to have both the physical and the online side. 
It is so important because like you said, we are growing in this world which is becoming so much more driven by the media, social media and technology having to adapt to this changing world of art that sometimes it's little, maybe less in person but more online in the pictures and the visuals they see through there is so important. But just finally, if you could give some any advice to any aspiring artist potentially listening that want to get involved, what would you say to them and why? Um, good question. Uh, I think anyone um, looking to build a career in the arts or creative industry, uh, I think from my own experience, I didn't go to, uh, I didn't go and down a traditional art route. I went to business school when I um, left school in Norwich. I went to business school in Manchester, where I currently live, um, and studied economics and finance and business and so on. Uh, and all the marketing, the branding, and the commercial bits were really key to to learn all those sort of core skills. Um, the painting has always been a sort of natural hobby for me and a sort of natural thing that I've been able to do on my own accord. Um, so perhaps my advice is a little bit different to a lot of um, artists who um, are in my similar in the similar position to me. Um, but my advice would be to, um, first of all, take care of your creative or your artistic practice itself. Uh, pursue your, you know, your, your thing that you do and your ideas and so on and keep getting better at that. But also don't neglect the, the practical commercial bits and all the sort of the business skills you might need or the marketing and learning about branding and um, how to do a website and do the basic sort of technical bits, how to do your photography, how to do your, you know, your social media posts and all these kind of practical bits that go alongside it. Um, I think if you can do your art, that's one thing that can get you so far, but if you can do the commercial bits around it, you can be more self-sufficient in that sense. You can unlock so many more doors and expand your potential reach so much. Um, so I think definitely spending time along, you know, throughout your journey to, to allocate a certain amount of your time in your week to learning these sort of core um, practical skills and the sort of commercial bits that can support your artistic practice. I think that would be my key advice. Don't neglect the, the business side of it all. But it's so important, like you said, that, that you can arm yourself with these other skills and create a wider impact as an artist, not through your art, but like you said, through business and social media it really is so important. But thank you so much, Cohen, for joining me on air today to discuss your journey as an artist and the importance of colour and the musical icons in your pieces. It really is amazing. So thank My you pleasure, so Sophie. much. Thank you. So that was Kerwin Blackburn, a local pop artist whose pieces are guaranteed to generate energy and positivity, discussing his journey as an artist as well as his plans on how he will continue to create eye-catching pop art pieces. And to keep up to date with the amazing art of Kerwin, you can head to his website at buykerwin.com or check out his Instagram at Kerwin Blackburn. Your community radio station for Norwich. Future Radio. Future Radio.